Hey, true believers. Chris Mack coming at you today with the Marvel Legends Age of Apocalypse Colossus Build-A-Figure Wave Cyclops. So I want to jump back into Earth 295, and I just figured Cyclops was the best way to kick it off. If you guys want to get this figure, you can get them at Big Bad Toy Store and Dorkside Toys. So as you see here, great X-Men logo from the comics. See the figure, Marvel Legends, Colossus Doohickey Mabobber up there. Come around to the side, the artist rendition is actually not that bad. I do enjoy this version, even though the face is a little... It is what it is. Come around to the back, get the same figure look here. Um, you can see the face just looks very oblong. It's just, I don't know. Read up, so I'll make sure to get a close-up so you can check that out at your convenience. Same with the figures from the Wave. Come back around this way, same artist rendition. Nothing on the bottom. You get that varnish doohickey Age of Apocalypse logo there on the top, which looks absolutely fantastic. So with that said, let's get this version of Scott Summers out of the packaging and get a closer look at him. Now here's Cyclops, or as Beast calls him, old evil eye, out of the packaging. And as you can see, right out of the packaging, he looks okay. There's a few things that really chat my hide, and I hate to say it, but when you really start getting into the nitty gritty of this character, I feel like whoever sculpted him or who was ever responsible for assembling this figure must have really hated Scott. What do I mean by that? Let's get him off the spinner and I'll explain further in detail. The first appearance of the Earth 295 Cyclops was X-Men Alpha number one from December of 1995. There is where we first see the established relationship of how Scott is the leader of the elite mutant force, what's up with his brother Alex, Beast, and the brother's relationship to Sinister. It is continued in Factor X series and just to kind of put it into some context, because in the Age of Apocalypse, Professor Xavier is dead. After Scott and Alex were thrown from their family's burning airplane and put into an orphanage, which was secretly run by Mr. Sinister. With Xavier dead, it's Sinister who adopts the brothers. And he uh, considers them the closest thing to genetic perfection. And as I just said, Scott being the leader of the elite mutant force, he's also favored by Sinister, which causes a rift between him and Alex. And it worsens as Cyclops begins to question the treatment of uh, the human prisoners and the breeding pens, and he begins secretly releasing them, one of them being a very damaged Polaris. Now also, when Jean was captured, Cyclops wanted to free her, but Logan infiltrated the lab, you know, preemptively to save her. And this is where the fight between Scott and Logan is just intense. Weapon X takes out Cyclops' eye. Cyclops, you know, retaliates by destroying Logan's left hand with his optic blasts. And so that's why they call him Old Evil Eye, because he's at this point just has one eye in this universe. Also, in this dark mirror verse, as you want to call it, X-Men, Nate Gray, he is the genetic mix of both Cyclops and Gene. So that's why I said that he's essentially Cable, but just a different iteration. So I recommend reading X-Men Omega from April 1995 to find out what happens with Scott, Gene, Havoc, and Logan. If you want to know what happens to Corsair, Havoc, and um, Cyclops' brother, read Tales from the Age of Apocalypse number two from January 1998. So with that said, Cyclops doesn't come with any accessories, which really irks my girk, especially since the Retro Wave came with that Optic Blast, and I believe the Krakoan version came with one. Ugh. So we'll just kind of get right into the paint apps here. And the one glaring thing right off the bat that I have to talk about, guys, is the face. Like, it's not horrible, horrible, and I'm sure that the reason that they molded it the way they did is to constitute how Cyclops has long hair in this universe. But look, it, it, he looks like one of those old, uh, I don't remember the toy line version, but they were like military versions of trolls. And it looks like he just has a troll head. So, uh, but the, uh, you know, the way they do the, fa the uh, facial features, how he has that glare, you can kind of see the skin, how it wrinkles the way it's supposed to, looks good. And of course his visor is spot on, that looks good. The nose and the mouth look good. Hair overall... Looks fine, but just th that face. Ah. Anyway, moving on. The blue, 
looks just like it does in the comics, especially his blue shoulder pads, which this was 1995, so of course they had to have some sort of shoulder pad and belt with pockets, which I know a lot of people joke about, but that was my, my generation, which dates me. So I personally enjoy it. The cuffs on his arms, I love how they're scuffed to show that this is not a nice universe, that he's actually seen some really bad battles. And just a little bit of red to show the blood. Just good stuff there. The only other problem with the paint apps that I have is, okay, the blues look good there like he's supposed to. It's the feet. And what do I mean by the feet? Well, to me, this is just piss poor planning. Because you'd think the Age of Apocalypse for collectors, maybe not newer readers, but collectors would really want something that's super comic accurate. Scott and Alex being you know, the elite mutant force, both had that, that militaristic boots. So, you know, if they didn't want to go, you know, they could have taken it from the juggernaut, uh, what do you call it, the juggernaut, Deadpool, or just somebody. And if it was too much, at least mold the legs to make them look like boots, and if you want to save money on paint, then paint it blue. But frick's sake, just making it look like it's all one piece. Ugh. Especially since they use the, what is that, the peg, they call it the cat bucky mold, right? It's just... Fill it in, for God's sake. Just fill it in already, because there's there's no reason for this. The only thing that I could suggest maybe using the stupid hole for is if you have like a backpack, like a snake eyes backpack you want to put on them, or if you want to make them jump in the air, I guess you could put like a, a, a flight stand peg in there. I guess that could work. But yeah, that's, that's essentially... It. Ooh, there goes the camera. <laughs> that's essentially it for the paint apps. I mean, he looks good, but the, the face... And the lack of, you know, his boots actually look like boots are what really chapped my hide overall. Articulation-wise, there's love and hate with this. So let's go ahead and start with the head. He can look down about that much. And because of that hair, which I wish Hasbro would figure out, if you warm him up, always fresh and foremost warming figures up, you can get him to look up that much. Head that way. Head that way. Arms go up that much or at least on this arm you can do that this the shoulder pads gonna kind of get in your way if I can get that peg there you go. see you have to kind of fight the the shoulder strap so that's kind of frustrating but it is what it is now what really irks me here is we're 20 I think this came out last year so these are 2021s I think why why single jointed elbows I thought, I thought we were past this crap, but I guess that's just, it's, it's too hard. They give us this pinless technology, all these new figures that can do double jointed elbows, and we get a pinned figure and single jointed elbows. That's why I said whoever sculpted or put this figure together, I think honestly hated it and uh, did this out of spite. At least that's how I feel about it. Ugh. Uh, hands, obviously 360, up down, all around, in and out, dirt to dirt, can spin, and spin, can go down, pretty good that way, back really well as well, legs kick out, butt flat, pain in my ass as usual, so you can't go all the way back on the back, thigh swivel, which McFarlane, come on now, let's get on with those, <laughs> thankfully, for the most part, double jointed knee there, boot swivel, Toe pivot, toe pivot, ankle rocker. So yeah, I mean, he has some good stuff, but the single jointed elbows and the butt flap, obviously, just ugh, really kind of kill the whole mood. Because when you want to photograph these and make them look dynamic, I hate being hindered like that. And I don't, what's the, what was the, the YouTube video? Ain't nobody got time for this to, to mod this. I don't have that time. So if anybody's done a mod and they want me to review it, See how I get the excited legs going on? <laughs> Let me know. But yeah, that's the articulation uh, and, and just the lack of... I would love to have an eye beam with this figure. <sighs> that's all right. Photoshop, here I come. Here's Cyclops next to the other Age of Apocalypse Colossus Wave figures that we've reviewed, the Marvel Legends Rogue and Magneto, and then, of course, the Deluxe Apocalypse, which was awesome, and then Legion, the little scamp that started the whole Earth 295 reality and then I threw in Deadpool and we'll get into why in a moment but here 
Magneto has double jointed elbows. Rogue, she has her problems, but she still, there's a way you could twist it to kind of give her a double jointed effect. And then if you look at Magneto here, he kind of has his pair of military boots, as does Rogue. So what kind of crack were they smoking when they're like, hey, let's just give Cyclops just straight blue legs and feet. I can't fathom it. That's just pure laziness. Now, with that said, we look at the Juggernaut build a figure wave Deadpool here that we've gone over. And they really went out of their way to kind of give him his shin pads, the straps on his boots. And he was part of a build a figure wave. So, why did no one take any extra care with Cyclops? A household long time X Men figure. They did with Rogue, they did with Magneto. They did with him. And hell, even Legion, you know, he is super flexible when you move him around. He's one of the more, more favorite ones from this wave. So why? Why would they not finish Cyclops off correctly? I, I, I don't know. Anyway, that aside, you get Cyclops up here with the rest of the Age of Apocalypse figures up on a shelf, action figure photography, however you want to go, and you're going to have a great time. I can't wait to start photographing him against my Weapon X. It's just going to be the bee's knees. Let us know what you think of all these figures. There goes Legion. Down in the comments below. This figure, I'm happy to have it because the Age of Apocalypse, as I've said in many reviews, is near and dear to my heart. However, as I said at the beginning of the review, I kind of feel like whoever made this guy, whoever sculpted or built this figure, just did not care too much because if you put this one up against the uh, retro wave x-factor cyclops or the what it was at the warlock build a figure wave where he's articulated and you know at least with the retro wave he had that blast wave effect and the same with the Krakoan version this guy doesn't have anything they didn't give him like a single eye beam you know single jointed elbows and his head looks to me i, I hate to i'm sure they had to do that the way that they did the head was to accommodate for the hair. But when you look at it up close, it looks like a troll doll to me or like an old school Ninja Turtle. So those are some things that are really going against this figure. But, you know, I can overlook all that. But I, I think what really grinds my gears the most is they just gave him the straight blue leg treatment. Because there are figures, like the Deadpool that we went over, that has the militaristic, you know... Uh, GI boots. Scott was the leader of the elite mutant force, and I believe, if memory serves correctly, he had those. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You got to kind of let it go. Overall, cool figure. Glad to have another one from the Age of Apocalypse, but just those few minor things really make it hard to fully enjoy this action figure. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and see if they have this figure in stock. If not, go the routes that I said at the beginning of the, of the review. Speaking of, if you have enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little apocalypse bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Photo slideshow coming up next, and I hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.